Hello, welcome back to Algebra. The title of this lesson is Multiply a Polynomial by a Monomial, Part 1. So in the last section I told you that we were going to be reviewing these laws of exponents, and we did that great length, and I left the laws of exponents on the board. I didn't erase anything because I want to have them as a reference as we do these problems. So here it's called multiplying a polynomial by a monomial. So big, big, big picture. Remember, polynomials can come in different flavors. We can have one term, we call it a monomial. Two terms, we call it a binomial. Three terms, we call it a trinomial. Anything past that, we just call it a polynomial. So here what we're going to be doing is crawling before we can walk. We're going to be multiplying these polynomials together, but in general we're going to be multiplying these polynomials only by a monomial, which means only by a smaller term on the outside. Then as we get into the next few lessons we'll be multiplying binomials together, which will be a little more complicated, and then multiplying trinomials and even bigger. But ultimately as we inch through these lessons you will start to see the patterns, and so they won't be like different cases that you'll have to memorize, it'll just become, it'll become natural because of the way we'll introduce it. So first we'll be multiplying polynomials by monomials, which is the simplest type of multiplication in polynomials that we have. So let's take a look at it, and you'll see really quickly why I left the laws of exponents on the board. So for your first question, it could be something like this. 3z squared times 2 times z cubed. Now this is even simpler because it's really a monomial, remember one term, this is a monomial, times another monomial. So this is even simpler than monomial times polynomial. We'll have one of those at the end, but essentially it's even simpler than, than that. But what we have here is we have numbers multiplied, and then we have uh, the, the same base here. So we need to look and see, is it even possible to multiply these, these terms together? Well, we can always multiply the numbers together. 3 times 2 is going to be 6, right? And then we have z squared and z to the third. Those are going to be multiplied together as well. Now when we go back to our laws of exponents, you know that when you multiply things with the same base, but different exponents, we just add the exponents. So here we're multiplying z squared times z to the third, which is going to be the same base, and we add the exponents, z, or z to the fifth. right? Which another way you could write this is you could say 6z to the 2 plus 3. So we'll circle this as your answer, because that is the answer, but really what you're doing is you're adding 2 plus 3 there, only because these bases are the same. If this were 3z squared times 2y squared, I could still multiply the numbers together, but I wouldn't be able to multiply or add any of the exponents together, I would just have to write them next to each other like they were, like they were multiplied, but only because it's the same base can I add these exponents together. All right, what if you had as a second problem, in parentheses, negative t to the fourth power raised to the third power. Now how do you handle that? Notice that it's a power raised to a power, but on top of that it's a negative sign in there, so you have to be really careful to do it right. Let me rewrite something just to make it a little bit more clear. On the inside, this negative t to the fourth is really negative one times t to the fourth. You'd agree with that, right? And this whole thing is raised to the third power. The reason I'm going to write it that way is because, remember when we go over here to our rules of exponents, when you have two things multiplied on the inside with the common exponent, you apply the exponent to each term separately. But since this is negative 1 times this, this is like two things. So the, the, three, the exponent of 3 applies to this, and it also applies to this. So the easiest way to write it would be like this. Negative 1 to the third power times t to the fourth to the third power. You want to be careful because if you don't apply the exponent here, then you'll get the wrong sign. So what do we have here? Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is going to give you negative 1. And then over here, t to the fourth raised to the third, we multiply the exponents. That's what the rule said. So t to the twelfth. So the answer that you get, I'll just go back this way, is negative t to the 12th. This is the final answer. Now once you get a little more comfortable with all this stuff, then you don't have to rewrite this as negative 1 times this to the 4th and then show it all like this. I'm doing that for two reasons. Number one, because I get to, to, to use two of the laws of exponents to give you more practice. Um, and number two, it's because in the beginning I just want to take it slower to make sure everybody's with me. Really, as you get a little bit farther in math, you look at this and you, you realize the 3 gets multiplied, the negative 1 gets, gets uh, raised to the third power, so then you know the answer is going to be negative, and then this gets applied to this, so you know you're going to have a t to the twelfth, which was the answer. But by breaking it up, negative one times t to the fourth, then I can show you, hey, this gets applied to both things, 
then I can show you the sine, then I can show you the other multiplication rule. So the answer is negative t to the 12th power. All right. What if we had uh, 3 times x squared times y multiplied by x times y squared? Again, monomial times monomial. So again, you have all this stuff multiplied together. So there's an implied 1 here. 3 times 1 is 3. We can always write that. And then we can multiply the x squared here times the x here, and we can add the exponents together. So it's going to be x to the 2 plus 1, giving you 3. But we still have this y times y squared, which means we have y to the 1 plus 2, which is also 3. So the answer is 3x cubed y cubed. Again, why? Because when you have, in general, same base, different exponents multiplied, you add the exponents. 3 times 1 gave me 3. Then I multiply the x's, same base, add the exponents. Same base here, add the exponents. Everything is multiplied together, so everything is written in the final answer right next to each other, because everything is still multiplied here, but I just can't add anything or do anything because these are different bases, so I can't simplify it any more than that. All right, for our next problem, we'll have 2 times u squared. Actually, we'll make it negative 2 times u squared times uv to the third power times negative u squared v squared, like this. Now what I'm going to do is multiply the first two terms and get that answer, and then when we, whatever we get from that, we'll multiply that by the third term. So first let's work on the first two. Negative 2 times 1 gives me negative 2. Then I have a u squared and a u here, so I can add these exponents because it's all multiplied together, u to the third power. And then this v cubed is here, but there's no v there at all, so it, it gets multiplied, but nothing actually happens, so v uh, to the third power. And then I have this third term, which I've done nothing with, so negative u squared v, whoops, v uh, squared. And so then I can multiply this times this. Negative 2 times negative 1 gives you positive 2. And then I have u cubed times u squared, so I add the exponents, u to the fifth. And then I have v cubed v squared, so I add those exponents, u to the, I'm sorry, v, v to the fifth power. So the answer is 2u to the fifth, v to the fifth. So again, you could do it all in one step, but then there's a little more chance of error. So work with the first two, multiply, add these exponents, get this, and then multiply by the third one. You can add these exponents and add these exponents and keep track of the coefficient being positive 2 over there. All right. Um, now this next one's interesting. What if you have um, 4 times a cubed times b squared all raised to the second power? Now, it's a term raised to a power. So there's a couple of things. If you look at this one, if you have things multiplied together in here with it raised to a power, the power gets applied to each thing separately. And also, if the thing that it's applying to is another power, then you have to multiply the powers. So we're really going to be applying both of those rules in this problem, because in this problem, we have three things. So the 2 is going to be applied as an exponent to each one of these things. So the easiest way to do it, just to show every little detail of the step, the 2 will be applied first to the 4, so it would be 4 squared, right? Then it'll be applied to a cubed, so you'll have a cubed squared. Then it'll be applied to b squared squared. So you see what I've done is I've taken the 2, I've applied it to the 4 as an exponent, applied it to this as an exponent, applied it to this as an exponent. Now we go to our other rule. 4 squared is 16. We have a product, uh, we have an exponent raised to an exponent. So it's going to be a to the 6. 2 times 3 is 6. And b to the 2 times 2 is 4. So it's 16a6b to the 4th power. That's the final answer. Now when you start doing this a little bit more, you can kind of do this in your head and just go straight to the answer. But I want to show you every step to make sure you're with me. All right, we just have a few more. What if we have negative 3 times p times q to the 4th power times r squared all raised to the 3rd power? How would we handle that? So it's going to be the same kind of thing. We have multiple things multiplied together and the exponent on the outside. So this exponent has to apply to each thing separately. So the way to, to do that is let's do it like this. Let's say the first term is negative 3, or the first part is negative 3. That exponent will apply to that. Then it'll apply to the p. 
which will be raised to the third power. Then it will apply to the q to the fourth power. That will be raised to the third power. Then it will be applied to the r squared to the third power. And now that you have it all blown out, it's a power to a power, a power to a power, so you just multiply the exponents here. But first, you have this first one. What is this? What you have over here, let me go over to the side, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Well, what you have is negative times negative times negative. That's going to give you a negative. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So really what you have is negative 27. That's the actual coefficient. And then p to the third power is just straight away read from here. This is a power to a power. So q, you multiply those. 4 times 3 is 12. And then 2 times 3 is 6. So power to a power means you multiply the powers. Negative 27, p cubed, uh, q 12, r to the sixth power. So we did, we used both of these guys. We applied to each term, and then we had a power to a power, so we had to multiply the powers together. So now you see why I wrote those down, to kind of have them handy so that as we're reviewing it, it won't be hopefully such a big deal. What if we have negative z to the third power times negative z, close parentheses, to the third power? Now these are actually slightly different. You know, I know they look the same, but they're slightly different because this is a negative sign, and then this z to the third is here. So this power here, if you don't have any other parentheses, this power of three only applies to the z. It doesn't apply to the negative sign here. Without any other parentheses, it applies only to what's right next door. But in this case, the entire negative z is in the parentheses, so it applies to everything on the inside. So the way to make sure you don't make any mistakes here is just to write it out. It's just the easiest thing to do. So the first term here is going to be negative z uh, to the third power. That's just the first term rewritten. That's all it is. Now, over here, we have a bunch of things that we're going to write out. Negative z times ne negative z times negative z. You see what I've done there? The reason I didn't like that is so that you can see that this is just multiplied by itself each time. But here, it's just the single negative sign there. So here, when you have a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative, it'll this will become a positive, then when you multiply again, it'll be a negative, then when you multiply again, it'll be a positive. So the answer is going to be a positive number, or a positive expression. Then you have z cubed times this, times this, times this, so you have 3, plus 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. z to the 6th power, that's the final answer. Because the signs all annihilate each other, giving you positive, you add all the exponents together because they have the same base. All right. This is completely correct, everything I've done here, but there's another way you can kind of think about it. So I'll kind of write that solution down here. The first term you can leave alone, negative z to the power of 3. But this one means you have an exponent applied into each thing. So here's a negative 1 in here. And when you apply that negative 1 raised to the third power, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is just going to give you a negative number, a negative 1. And then that z is also raised to the third power. So really, when you simplify this and apply the exponent in, you'll get negative z to the third power. The negative comes because of negative 1 to the third, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. This gets raised to the third power. And so then you have two things multiplied together. Negative times negative is positive, And then z uh, to the 3 plus 3 is, is 6. z to the 6, exact same way I wrote. So here I just wrote it out a little bit more. Here I kind of use one of the rules of applying the exponent in. You get the same, uh, same value either way, or same answer either way. <clears throat> OK, we only have two more. Uh, the next one is, what if you have s squared times t, all raised to the third power, times s times t cubed, all raised to the second power? So here you have lots of little exponents running around, and the easiest way to do it is to take it step by step. So what we have here is we have a product raised to a power, so we're going to apply the power in. Now we're going to, I don't want to say we're going to shortcut steps, because I'm not shortcutting it, it's just I don't want to write everything out every time. The way you do this is you say, okay, this is applied to the s squared. So I'm going to multiply these exponents. So what I'll have is s to the 6. 2 times 3 is 6. And then right next door, I have a t to the third power, because 1 times 3 is 3. So I've applied this exponent to each thing, multiplying the exponents along the way. right? And then next door, I have this term. I have an s to the first power. 1 times 2 is 2, so it'll be s squared. And then the t, 3 times 2 will be 6 like this. So I apply the exponent here, and I apply the exponent here, multiplying as I go. 
Then I have these multiplied together. I have an s to the 6 and an s squared. So when I multiply them, same base, I add the exponents, s to the 8. And then the t, I can add those exponents. 3 plus 6 is 9. So it should be s to the 8th, t to the 9th. That's the final answer. And we only have one more problem here. And this one, up until now, we've actually done multiplying monomial times monomial, but in this case, we're going to actually have 3y, which is a monomial, times a polynomial, which is y cubed minus 2y squared um, plus 3. So again, I told you this is multiplying a polynomial times a monomial. Here's a polynomial, a trinomial in this case, times a smaller monomial. So here's where we start putting everything together. You know that when you have things on the outside of a parentheses, you have to distribute them into every term. And now you know that when you multiply things in and they have exponents and variables, you now know how to combine the exponents. So we put it all together and we say this has to get multiplied times this, then times this, then times this, dealing with the exponents as we go. 3y times this means 3 because 3 times 1 is 3 y, same base, add the exponents to the fourth power, right? Then we have 3y times this, but this is negative 2, so 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Then I have y times y squared, so I can add those exponents, making y to the third. Then I have this times this, 3 times 3 is 9, positive 9. y times, well, there's nothing else there, is just going to give you that. So what you have is 3y to the fourth minus 6y cubed, plus 9y. That's the final answer. So everything that we've been doing in this lesson has been building up to this last problem, multiplying a polynomial times a monomial. And what we're going to do is go ahead and close this lesson out now because I think we have got enough practice. I want you to make sure that you can do every one of these because follow me on to part two of multiplying a polynomial times a monomial. We'll have a lot more problems like this and even slightly more complicated ones as well so that you can see how to handle it you notice the skill is a little different. We got to multiply in, but then we have to keep track of the exponents separately. So that's what we're doing here. And then as we go through and do lots and lots of problems, you'll get lots of experience and practice. So make sure you can do this. Follow me on to the next lesson where we will continue multiplying polynomials by monomials in algebra.